Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to try to keep you uh, excited and on your toes, or definitely not on your knees. Um, I think this is a very important topic. It's a very common uh, complaint that we find when we're dealing with the, the patient populations that we treat. It's not just the spine that we focus on, and I'm going to be a little bit critical of our current guidelines in this world. I do have to disclose I am a consultant for Pacira, and I do speak on cryoblative techniques for this company. And we're going to talk a little bit about today. We'll talk a little bit about prevalence, differential diagnosis, statistics. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the definition of RFA and interventional options and what's really out there and what's really good and what's maybe not so good. So when we think about knee OA prevalence, um, well, OA is a lot of what knee pain is, and we know that this is a global situation. Um, it, it gets worse with obesity, it gets worse with age, um, and there's a lot of patients that might fit in your category of patients that we treat for knee OA um, who walk in the door and that are part of your patient practice. Some of the common risk factors specifically for osteoarthritis include the following, female sex, inflammatory joint disease, obesity, older age, and um, occupational issues. So if you are somebody who is a, a runner or somebody who has repetitive knee bending or previous knee injury, these are all predisposing factors to knee OA. Well, now I'm going to pretend I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I'm actually an anesthesiologist, interventional pain physician. But certainly when people come in the door, if I'm an orthopedic surgeon, there's a lot of different aspects of, of pain outside of the I'm, there's a fracture and I must fix it, including sprains, bursitis, meningo, uh, meniscus tears, chondromalacia, and of course, classic OA. Uh, 